There's many ways to describe strength and weakness, I suppose. For me, one of the strengths that stand out uh, is when we were in Africa there, the main city on the port was Cotonou, and, and the boats that come in, the fisher, fishermen's boats that come in would bring their catch, and just driving near the area, wow, the power of the stench of the fishy smell, I mean, was overwhelming. I mean, we didn't have air conditioning in that old car, and we'd just drive around with the windows open. It was hot all the time. But we put the windows up whenever, <laughs> quick, you know, roll the windows up. Oh, it was just so powerful. Another powerful memory for me is in uh, senior year of high school, Brad Norris had a 67 Plymouth. Uh, that he built the engine of 440 Hemi with nitrous. At one time, Brad gave me a ride home, and he had just been to the drags, and uh, and he broke 12 seconds. It was 11.96 seconds, and and when as soon as we cleared the hospital, going toward my house, he got on it, and I've never felt that ex experience of being glued to the seat like <laughs> I did in those moments. So, so powerful. Now since, there's been a few more times that I've had that experience, but he was just a high school kid like me, and he did it all. Sadly, um, a few months later, Brad turned that same car over in the ditch, and he was killed. So, the things that this world tells us that are strengths and powerful don't always end up well. You know what I mean? Sometimes what we thought was a strength really can turn around and bite us. Now, in our country, the heat continues to rise uh, as our country is divided. Thankfully, the election's over, and hopefully we can move past, and hopefully things will go well. But something tells me it's not just going to be smooth sailing, of course, and yet, um, we know that if you just read the first two verses of Romans 13, God puts every ruler in place. And we can put our trust in God, regardless of who is in power at the particular moment. So, with the heat rising, where do we find ourselves as we go forward? We may look to our philosophy of life. As most of us will fall back upon something we have believed. Right? And so, for example, there was a famous atheist named Friedrich Nietzsche. He died in 1900 when he was 55. He was a German philosopher. His writings on truth, morality, history, and the meaning of existence have made an enormous influence on Western philosophy, which is saying a lot. Uh, it was he who coined the phrase, God is dead. We've heard that many times because of that recent movie. I guess not that recent anymore, but... Um, anyway, he once said this. He said, Assert yourself. Care for nothing except yourself. The only vice is weakness, and the only virtue is strength. Be strong. Be a superman. The world is yours if you work hard enough for it. Okay? That's his statement. But contrary to that, and among other things Jesus said, is this. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Two very different ideas, and one could say opposite ideas. Although the first words are from an atheist, and the last quote from the teaching of Jesus, it often seems that Christians go by Nietzsche's philosophy rather than Jesus' teaching. Many Christians live as though the only virtue is strength, but Jesus never talked much about strength. He often, though, spoke about meekness. 
We're all too familiar with weakness, most of us anyway, aren't we? And I'd like to give three biblical examples just as we begin. First from 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 15 that says, it says this, so will, so will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Okay, so... C.S. Lewis said, The gospel means we can stop lying to ourselves. C.S. Lewis uh, is, he is famous, he was a professor at Oxford and Cambridge in England there, which is not a small thing. Uh, but he wrote many books, famously became a Christian when he was not one. Uh, wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, etc. Um, and they called him a lay theologian. There it is. Anyway, he said, the gospel means that we can stop lying to ourselves. The sweet sound of amazing grace saves us from the necessity of self-deception. It keeps us from denying that though Christ was victorious, the battle with lust, greed, and pride still rages within us. As a sinner who has been redeemed, I can acknowledge that I am often unloving, irritable, angry, and resentful with those closest to me. When I go to church, I can leave my white hat at home and admit I have failed. God not only loves me as I am, but also knows me as I am. Because of this, I don't need to apply spiritual cosmetics to make myself presentable to Him. I can accept, my, I can accept ownership of my poverty and powerlessness and neediness. All oh, those are good words, right? Why are they good? Because some top guy is saying them, right? And that makes all the rest of us that no one will ever hear of, Jim, basically. It can make us say, right, wow. I mean, it just sinks in on you and this peace comes over you like, okay, that gives weakness, that kind of makes it acceptable a bit. So in the verse above, it mentions perishable about our bodies, dishonor about them, and weakness. Did you hear those in his testimony? See, this is his testimony. He didn't somehow become Superman that the atheist talked about, right? Actually, I've met Superman now. <laughs> Tracy's uh, son-in-law is... Man, yeah. uh, they call him Super. Well, he's a great guy. <laughs> anyway, but C.S. Lewis wasn't a Superman, and he never purported to be one. You see, I love it. Now, the second example is counterintuitive as well. To be sure, I'm sorry if that's a little small. It's Romans. I'm sorry, Second Corinthians 12, 7 to 10, and it says. So to keep me from becoming, so this is Paul speaking about, he's, he's looking back at how things have gone, and he's received revelations from God. Might tend to give a person a bit of an ego, you know. He says, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, 
My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am confident, sorry, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I can't believe this. I came across this about Hudson Taylor. And then I looked him up just to share a little bit like I did about C.S. Lewis there. Uh, Hudson Taylor, he died in 1905, uh, born in 1832. He became a missionary from Great Britain and went to China there. He was the founder of the China Inland Mission. Spent 51 years in China. And the society that he began was responsible for bringing over 800 missionaries to the country who began 125 schools and directly resulted in 18,000 Christian conversions, as well as the establishment of more than 300 stations of work with more than 500 local helpers in all 18 provinces of China. It's, it was huge. I remember reading about him uh, he was known for his sensitivity to Chinese culture and for his zeal for evangelism. He adopted wearing native Chinese clothes, even though this was rare among missionaries of that time. Now this historian, I mean I have this book, uh, historian Ruth Tucker summarizes the theme of his life. No other missionary in the 19th century since the Apostle Paul has had a wider vision and has carried out a more systemized plan of evangelizing a broad geographical area than Hudson Taylor. So, if in fact you would like to be encouraged, uh, like Heidi and I have been, pick up a copy of Hudson Taylor's Spiritual Secret and uh, be, be blessed. Anyway, all of that to say that may have heard of the daily devotional Our Daily Bread. In 1996, this was said of him. Hudson Taylor, founder of the China Inland Mission, knew the secret of strength through weakness. He knew the secret of strength through weakness. Complimented once by a friend on the impact of the mission, Hudson answered, It seems... It seemed to me that God looked over the whole world to find a man who was weak enough to do his work. And when at last he found me, he said, He is weak enough, he'll do. <laughs> All God's giants have been weak men or women who did great things for God because they reckoned on his being with them. That's something you and I can do. They reckoned on his being with them. Put that in your pocket and take it with you all week. This saying brings us to the third scripture here of 2 Corinthians 13, 4. Here that says, For to be sure he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by God's power. Likewise, we are weak in Him, yet by God's power we will live with Him to serve you. And so, we see this spoken of about Jesus as well as the disciples who will live by His power. Now, so, just I want to use this passage from Mark 14 uh, as, as the main passage today. Here, Mark 14, 32 to 50, as it says. Actually, I'm beginning at 22 for this first part. And this first point is that Jesus establishes those who are his followers. He establishes us. Today is kind of part of that. 
we have made it our habit to come and worship and draw near to Him and pray to Him, hear His message, uh, obey in obedience that uh, He would have us gather together and see each other and we're fellow followers of Christ. Okay, and so in Mark 14, 22, here is the night before the crucifixion and he's meeting for the Passover with his guys and he establishes them. Look at what he says. As they were eating, he took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So here Jesus is establishing them. He is looking at his eleven. Judas is, we'll get to Judas in a minute. But, uh, but these guys, he is, he is saying, you're, you're my guys. You're the ones who you know, and he, and he begins the Lord's Supper. And we have carried it out to this day. And when we take it together, it helps establish us, helps us remember that He has done this for us. Now, by example, Jesus shows us how to live in the midst of our weakness here, starting in verse 32. And as they went to a place called Gethsemane, and He said to His disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. Excuse me. And going a little further, farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, All things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Now let's pause there just a moment and consider, was, how was Jesus feeling right here? Weak or strong? He's feeling weak. You know, Jesus never sinned, but he knows what he's about to face. You know, it's, it's not... Figurative, let's see, what's there, figurative and what's the other side? Literal. Literal. It, it's not figurative when he's handed them the cup and he says, this is my blood. I mean, in a matter of hours, right? And so he's going to face this and he's struggling and he's, he's in the refiner's fire to be sure. Okay, so weak is how he's feeling. Then, 37, and he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, let's pause another moment and say, how are the disciples feeling here, weak or strong? Weak. Here their master is struggling and, and he's just a ways over there and they're, they can't keep overthinking. So, they're feeling weak. Does he throw them under the bus? Get a new group? <laughs> no, he doesn't. Something tells me that if they can be weak, it's okay for us to be. You know what I mean? There again, 39. He went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And so, I think it should be stated that it's often hard to follow what Jesus asks of us. It is hard. No two ways about it. He asked them to wait and watch and even pray with him. 
as he goes and is. How many of you got to watch that The Chosen yet? I just want to promote that. You know, it's not video, live video footage of Jesus, but boy, it sure, it's an aid to our faith, I believe. You know, when you see someone else give a testimony, that's why I read about these other great guys, you know, because it's their testimony. It tells about them, and it helps give us courage and faith, you know? And so when we look, and how often have I ever promoted some TV show or, or the like? Never, almost. And yet this, The Chosen, is marvelous. It's, it's not everything, but you just see how they interact and they stick so closely to the scriptures. And yes, they fill in a little bit of what isn't in here, but it doesn't disturb the message a lick. Anyway, so be encouraged and pick up a copy or it's on YouTube. You can just watch it for free, but if you buy it, you know, it's self-generating and, and some big company isn't behind it. Anyway, so if you buy it, it, it just helps them a little bit alone for season two. Anyway, um, Jesus was constantly saying to his, his disciples, right, where is your faith? And so this might be one of those occasions where he's at the height of his suffering before the actual suffering and having to face it. And he would look forward to the camaraderie of at least I've got my guys around me and he comes back in their sleep. The poor guy. I mean, right? Let's finish the passage. 41. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And, uh, and when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And so... Where did Jesus find the strength needed to go forward with the plan? It was with God alone. It was with God and prayer. Now once he was captured, the Jews looked, uh, to the Jews, Jesus looked quite weak, didn't he? Once he was arrested. But look what Jesus accomplished, right? By the power of God, he gained salvation. For those who would repent and believe. He gained salvation for those who would believe. Because, because he did what God asked of him. It's marvelous. It's, it's quite big. <laughs> the truth is, he has plans for you and me as well. Plans this week. They may seem humble. In comparison, they are. And yet, it is the truth that he has plans you. It's at every turn. It's at every decision. It's at every juncture. We, and we will only carry them out by His power. That is His plan. So for us to feel weak is perfectly normal and fine. Because we know where the power is. But we must hold on. We must reach out and grab alone before we go. Uh, a pastor said this, said, He who is a stranger to prayer is a stranger to power. God would encourage you and I today to spend those moments in prayer that really matter because He is the power source. 
One pastor said this, the same guy. When I pray, coincidences happen. When I don't, they don't. <laughs> I love that. Because he believed. You and I have that same opportunity. Two quick stories, to, and then I'll be done. When Dr. Larry Stevenson arrived in Somalia to work among the lepers there, he was instantly welcomed. He wouldn't have been except for his weakness. Several years earlier in a farming accident, Larry lost all but the knuckle on the four fingers of his left hand. It sometimes was a handicap for his work in the United States, but it was a great asset in Somalia. The lepers spotted his crippled hand and concluded, he's one of us. And he was able to achieve things among them that someone with a stronger left hand could not have. When I am weak, then I am strong, is the verse from 2 Corinthians that Paul said. We are to work out our salvation with God's strength. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And I want to finish with this, this story that is a true story, different than the Karate Kid, even though it's the same story. And, I mean, it's very similar to the Karate Kid, but it's judo, okay? So, this 10-year-old boy decided to study judo. The problem was he had been in a car accident and had lost his left arm. So he started the lessons and was doing well, but couldn't understand why after three months of lessons that his coach had only taught him one move. So he said to him, Sensei, shouldn't I be learning more moves? And the coach replied, this is the only move, this is the only move you know but this is the only move you will ever need to know. The boy didn't understand, but kept training, and several months later, the coach took him to his first tournament, and to his surprise, he won the first two matches. The third match was more difficult, but eventually his opponent got impatient and charged him, and when the boy uh, used his one move, he won the match. Now he was in the finals. His opponent was bigger, stronger, and more experienced. Experienced. For a few moments, he seemed to be outmatched. His opponent, opponent was hitting hard. The referee was afraid the boy might get hurt, so he called a timeout. His coach stepped in and said, let him continue. In a few moments, after they started back, his opponent made a critical mistake. He dropped his guard, and the boy used his one move to pin him down, so the boy was declared champion. <laughs> On the way home, the boy asked his coach. He, the, the two reviewed every move in, the, in each match, and the boy got up enough courage to ask his coach, how did I win the tournament with just one move? And he said, well, you won for two reasons. You mastered one of the most difficult moves in all of judo. judo. That's number one. Number two, the only known defense for that move is for your opponent to grab your left arm. <laughs> his biggest weakness was his greatest strength. This will only happen when, when you learn to sink your roots deep. The reason so many believers lose the battle when they face trials is that they have sh a shallow root system. Paul prayed for, that the church in Ephesus would be rooted and established in love. A shallow believer cannot survive when trials come, and they will come. You need to plow the soil, and you need to put down roots. And so it is for us. Are we... Supermen and women? Hardly. I certainly am not. And yet, yet, I have access to the Almighty God, my Savior, as we all do. Will you pray to Him for that strength that we need for this week and for all those decisions?
Let's bow in prayer. Father, thank you for your strength. In our weakness, we are weak, and yet you are strong. It is a truth to embrace. You are our power source. Thank you for making us how you have, that even in our weakness, uh, we band together, we look to you, we especially look to you if we want the strength. Help us look to you this week. Help us look to you right now. Help us in our heart of hearts to open that heart to you fully. 